Welcome everyone to this year's LSFMM BPF conference in Salt Lake City. I hope you all had a good journey here. Um, to kick things off, I would first like to thank everyone who has been involved in making this conference happen. This year, um, program committee, please stand up everyone. Um, I, I, for, for storage I.O., Martin Patterson and Javier Gonzalez, please give a round of applause. <clears throat> For file systems, uh, um, Armir Goldstein and Jan Kara. For memory management, Michael Hocko and Dan Williams. And for BPF, uh, myself and then Martin, who unfortunately couldn't be here because he fell sick shortly before the conference. But yeah, let's thank him also. <laughs> And of course, for all the event logistics, I'd like to thank the Linux Foundation team, Erica Allen, uh, Christina Harter, and team for making this happen. <laughs> and of course, our sponsors. So without them, the conference wouldn't be happening. Um, Diamond sponsors, this year we have Meta, Platinum sponsors, eBPF Foundation, Nvidia, and Samsung. And the silver sponsors, we have Jump Trading. Thank you. So a little bit about the logistics for this event. So again, we have a hybrid event. Uh, like, like last year, we have 140 developers participating. And there's also a virtual component. So basically, when you have your sessions, the AV team automatically relays things to Zoom so that the remote participants can uh, also discuss. Um, the schedule, you will find this, uh, including the links for Zoom, uh, on your badge or on the website. There's a QR code for, for the badge where you can access the Zoom password. Uh, is uh, Linux uh, 1991 for, for those participating. And very important, if you speak, please use the microphones so that the remote participants can uh, also hear you. Um, the session leads, they will monitor uh, what's happening in, in, in Zoom, if there are questions or discussions, and loop people in when needed. Uh, one thing that is important, and just to uh, point this out, for the storage I.O. track, so we discussed with the sessions lead there, everything is off record. So there will be no uh, videos published on YouTube afterwards or, uh, you know, LWN. Um, publications. Um, for the other tracks, if needed, please talk to your session leads that something should be off record. And after the conference, we can gather all the sessions that should not be published, just that you are aware. Yeah, and be kind to each other, keep things technical and productive. Uh, some miscellaneous bits, so each day there's a breakfast from the conference provided, same as lunch. Um, at the end of each day, there's a, a small slot for lightning talks, uh, if you want to uh, give one. And yeah, for Monday, there's an evening event. And uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, dinner is on your own. Uh, group photo, group photo will also be today, 6.30 after the lightning talks. So yeah, please stick around for that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Or driver's license. I think that no password. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So there, there you have it. Like, please bring your badge and your passport, um, so that you can have beer. <laughs> um, the venue, so it will be today, 7 p.m. It's in walkable distance uh, from the conference venue. It's at the Squatters Pub Brewery. Uh, there will be drinks and uh, uh, food provided. And yeah, three minute walk. The link, uh, how you can find your way there is also in the schedule. So, all right. So with that said, um, 
I think it's a tradition each year to have a summary readout on progress that happened since last year in each of the tracks. So yeah, let's start with storage. So, all right. You have a list? I brought some notes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we we have had a pretty busy year in in storage. Um, we have had some uh, a major reset, I guess we could say on how we deal with zone devices. Damien has been, <laughs> Damien has redone the zone locking to, to now be a, a plugging model instead, which uh, simplifies and beautifies a lot of things. So, so, so thanks for that. Uh, another thing that's happened and is currently ongoing is Christoph has redone the way we do queue limits so that they can be stacked atomically. We've often had cases where devices are slow to initialize, sometimes they report wrong values for a little while until you know, discovery is complete inside the device and then they report wrong values for like less than a second until they're ready. Um, so we've had all these hacks in the stack that hopefully um, in 6.11 are gonna completely go away um, so that the stacking will be atomic and will not end up with intermediate state um, while devices are being initialized. Yeah, so we also have had uh, some work from BART <clears throat> bringing back the red hints, specifically for uh, SCSI and, uh, and UFS. And that's something that came up from, from last year, too. Um, coming also from last year, things that I that didn't actually move forward, we had a, a, some discussions on peer-to-peer -peer and computational storage, and that doesn't seem to have moved forward much. That's uh, Bates uh, talked a lot about it last year, but uh, we haven't seen so many patches. Um, we've seen some block stack performance that Keith was uh, was doing, and then now uh, it has primarily gone into the, the meta buffers uh, and going to the pass-through uh, meta IO. Last year, we also had some work on live migration that was if you ask me, maybe a little bit too early to bring to this, uh, to this forum, but um, at least from a uh, standards perspective, things are moving forward, and I think we would expect probably not to discuss a lot this year about it, but probably hitting the mailing list pretty soon. So if folks are interested, I think that's, that's also a good uh, venue. Um, we wrote a lot of things of folios and pages and buffer heads because even though that affects everybody, I think we're going to see a lot of discussion this year about a, a large block and a, you know buffer heads and, and all that. So I think you know, we'll have plenty of time to talk about that. And then I, the last thing we wrote about um, you know, and that is also related with atomic work that uh, that John Gary is doing. So everything is kind of uh, coming together this year. And then we had a copy offload that we also discussed last year. Uh, there were some number of patches hitting the list, not that much progress, but I think this year we're, we're going to try to to wrap it up. I know. Did I forget anything else? Uh, I think that's it. Um, I mean, it wouldn't be LSF without a session on copy offload, so we, you know. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. So. Uh, in the uh, file system land, so last year we had some discussions about mount, mount API changes and so on. This year we are going to have continuation of this, but we have progressed upstream. Uh, we have merged the new uh, new way for the user space to actually discover discover mounted devices. Miklos was writing that. Uh, and we have like a couple new additions to the mount API, so there things are progressing well, I would say. Uh, we have also, uh, we are going to have static discussion this year, that's kind of a recurring topic. Uh, so uh, that will, <laughs> we'll see what we, what we will arrive at there. <laughs> Uh, regarding uh, discussions about old and new file system, that's one of the long-standing topics as well. So last year we were discussing about bcachefs that got merged actually during the year, so this is kind of success item, I would say. <laughs> uh, 
regarding the deprecation, at the end of this year we are removing Chrysler FS, so that's that's kind of <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of success as well. But but yeah, we want more, so we, uh, this discussion is going to continue, I guess. Uh, we, so we'll have our maintenance session about file system, and we'll be also discussing some topics around Rust in the file system layer, and so on. And also we have some new file systems arriving, as usual, like FAMFS was proposed recently, and, and some other topics. So yeah, it's a never-ending story. Uh, with IOMAP, uh, we have been doing some changes. Uh, we have actual documentation now for IOMAP, thanks to Ritesh, so <laughs> so, so that's good as well. Uh, we have some progress on converting file systems to use for IOMAP, and also basically uh, the huge base support for IOMAP is done and working with XFS, and now basically more file systems are taking advantage of this. So EXT2 and EXT4 is has done a good progress in the conversion. BTRFS was partly converted as well, at least the direct IO path. So, yeah, progress is made. But it's like, I guess 10 years from now, we will still be <laughs> discussing which file systems we are missing to convert. Uh, so, yeah, these will be topics also this year as well, I believe. Uh, then the last year we had also discussions about K-thread freezer APIs, but uh, I think no progress was made in that area. Uh, and last but not least, the atomic rights are a recurring topic we were, we were discussing it last year. Now there was a lot of activity around this, but nothing is merged yet, as far as I know, at least in file system land. But so, so we will be, there are, let's say, we are still not in full agreement how to do this. So <laughs> this is going to happen again this year. And with that, I'll hand over to Amir. Yeah, thanks. I think uh, John covered the, the most, uh, the, big, the big stuff. Okay. I'm, I grew. Um, uh, a few other things that uh, were discussed last year. Um, uh, there's a topic of, uh, I called it, uh, mostly pass-through file systems. Uh, under this category, it's uh, Fuse. Um, Fuse BPF was discussed uh, here last year, and uh, we've made some progress with Fuse pass-through, not, not with BPF specifically, but it's not, uh, it's not abandoned, still working on that. And FA notifies the other implementation for mostly pass-through file system. I'm going to talk about it. I'll do an update uh, tomorrow, I think. Um, mounting images. Um, we had a, um, a topic last year. Um, um, we discussed uh, ComposeFS and something, uh, and areas and uh, topics around this area um, and other topics that are meant to uh, provide a solution for how to mount images that are, well, not, not uh, verified, not safe. And um, the, the proposal that was here last year, ComposeFS, was merged. Uh, it's functional. Uh, I think it's being used. And also uh, other systems like SystemD are not supporting mount of um, Mount of images by unprivileged users by trusting a uh, signature of the image, which is, uh, I think it's an exciting um, uh, direction. Um, we had discussions over the past several years about testing file systems and specifically for backporting fixes to stable kernels. And we had a session last year. We presented the uh, rather new model of uh, maintainership for XFS with uh, maintainers for each LTS version. And, and this year we have, we're going to have a continuing session about that from uh, Leah, from one of the maintainers. And we have two other, or four if you include me, uh, LTS XFS maintainers here uh, to discuss these things. Uh, and, and other file system testing related like uh, KDevOps and uh, other improvements have been uh, discussed before and will be discussed again. Um, 
Uh, yeah, that's the most uh, things that I have. One thing that I, we discussed last year in the NFS uh, buff was um, iVersion, uh, Jeff's iVersion. We discussed it last year. Uh, there was progress and then back to square one. So we're going to discuss, rediscuss it again, hopefully, to a better outcome. So from the memory management side of things, uh, mostly business as usual, constant flow of improvements, cleanups, and fixes. Uh, I will not mention all of them. Sorry for those that you found important, and they will not be mentioned. But uh, um, yeah, we are seeing uh, constant or continuous qualification of the memory management. Very successful project, I would say. So not only that a large part of the MM subsystem is converted already, but uh, we are we have uh, or Matthew got rid of uh, PageVex and other relics from the past, which is really a improvement. Also on the um, on the performance uh, side of things, uh, it seems that we are slowly approaching times when MUP SEM will be a problem of the past. A large part of the fault paths are already converted. So just to mention a couple of them, um, most of the uh, file back uh, faults are converted, swap, user fault FD, huge TLB. So thanks for all that work, that, that's really awesome. Then um, on, on the performance side of um, vmalloc, zsmalloc improvements, um, PT, uh, PTE batching on um, unmapping and zapping memory uh, uh, address space, uh, Page owner improvements on THP uh, side, we are seeing more and more of the uh, multi size THP work coming mostly from the ARM world uh, with continuous uh, or contiguous uh, PTEs. But uh, I think that this will be shaping the future of the anonymous memory faulting uh, outside of the ARM realm. Um, on the memory tuning side, uh, we have uh, a weighted interleaving uh, interface to increase the throughput. Uh, yeah, what else do we have here? Um, yeah, we got rid of the slab allocator. Um, that's probably the biggest, <laughs> biggest and direct Im uh, improvement coming up from the LSFMM last year because uh, uh, the allocator was uh, uh, deprecated shortly after the uh, conference and uh, dropped just recently. So we are country with currently only with a single slab allocator. Hopefully that will stay that way for some time. And yeah, I guess that that's those biggest highlights that I could uh, uh, find. Yeah, and Damon is just growing its feature set over time. We'll hear much more uh, during the conference. Uh, we'll also talk more about memory tiering and CXL and, and other technologies, so. Okay. Yeah, so segueing up from that to some of the CXL updates. So CXL subsystems kind of continued to mature. Um, one of the things that's interesting there is we have QEMU emulation for CXL devices and they've been working on uh, the TCG emulation because now you can have your Emulated PCI devices also providing memory. It's a, apparently it's a difficult problem in QMU, and they've been working pretty hard on pretty hard on that. Uh, we mentioned uh, memory tiering, and so one of the big things that's come through the CXL side is now CXL can enumerate a lot of these performance properties uh, that you used to have to trust your BIOS vendor to do for you correctly um, to varying degrees of success. Um, the uh, so, but now Linux can do it natively. You can ask the device what kind of memory you have. We can look at the, the PCI topology and, re and really figure out whether your memory is a, a NUMA hop away or, or a hippity hop away and, and uh, do your algorithm accordingly. Um, uh, Gregory Price got this memory tiering, uh, heterogeneous me memory interleaving support upstream. So now you can interleave between your CXL with a little bit higher latency and your, your DDR. Um, 
some, some of the work we were considering as future work last year has, has moved along this year. We now have uh, patches on the list uh, for dynamic capacity devices. These are devices that are kind of similar to your thinly provisioned storage. Now you can have thinly provisioned memory and, and memory can be added to your host uh, dynamically at runtime. We have uh, FAMFS, which is maturing on the list. Uh, we'll, hear, we'll hear more about that uh, this this session or this uh, this conference. Um, we had we had an interesting thread about fabric management and people wanting to do different pass throughs from user space into the kernel to control different vendor specific aspects of switches. Uh, not really a memory management topic, but definitely a kernel community topic about how do we build pass throughs for kind of management interfaces. So I think that we we've, we've had. We've had community discussions about, about pass-throughs in the past, and those will continue to be uh, a topic of discussion. Um, but otherwise, we're getting more mature on our, our uh, address translation and, and memory RAS. I think we're finding out that, hey, we've outsourced a lot of that to our BIOS platforms in the past, and now we want the kernel to do it, and the kernel is uh, now being challenged to get, to get better in some of these error handling scenarios. So CXL continues to kind of push the edges of where the kernel has been, depending on the platform in the past, now it's, hey, you, you got the keys, you got to drive now, kernel, on some of these things. But that's the CXL update. All right, so from the BPF side, uh, I'd like to first go a bit into the core infrastructure, uh, also outside of the kernel. So there has been a lot of progress on the BPF uh, GCC backend. Um, to, to be on par with LVM, um, to get all the BPF self-tests running that we have in the kernel. Uh, BPF instruction set standardization document, so that's in its final stage. Um, from the BPF um, kernel side, we have the token, BPF tokens, uh, which basically delegate a subset of the BPF functionality to trusted but unprivileged applications. There has been a lot of work on the just-in-time compilers to support the new BPF uh, CPU before instruction set and things like KCFI and so on. Also to make uh, digital images more iCache uh, friendly uh, with the PROC pack infrastructure. Uh, BPF Arena, that has been a big feature, uh, which is basically to implement a sparse shared memory region between BPF programs and user space applications, and that's useful to implement things like in-kernel accelerators. Uh, the BPF verifier side has seen a ton of improvements since last year. What I like in particular is that also Academia has found um, really interest in, in the verifier. So uh, there have been uh, folks from universities who are looking into formal verification. They have a tool which is called ACNI, and that basically takes the kernel code from the verifier almost as is and runs it through their formal uh, verification. Um, so that has been, they, they have also submitted a couple of patches to improve things on, on that record. So in general also the um, register bound tracking support and, and um, has seen improvements. Um, we got assertions and exceptions in BPF programs, uh, open coded iterators to make it easier to iterate through a, a set of objects in the BPF program. Um, yeah, the uh, BPF timers, uh, they, they have landed uh, since last year, as well as uh, new, m more recently, BPF work queues for deferring events and BPF program. And yeah, KFUNCS, so there, have been, uh, there has been progress on uh, availability detection work so that uh, applications can see whether some of the KFUNCS are on the underlying kernel or not. Um, BPF upstream CI, so that's super critical. Basically, uh, for every single patch that lands on the BPF mailing list, they, they go through an extensive set of tests. So I think by now we are like much much beyond 1,000 test cases. Um, so yeah, that has seen a lot of new test coverage over the year, given every feature also has to come with a set of tests. Um, and recently, uh, like, like throughout the last year, there also have been benchmarks. Uh, in particular around the tracing, so for K-probes, U-probes, um, to see like how efficient are the attach points and so that we can look into improving uh, the, the performance overhead for them. 
then in the area of uh, networking. Uh, so uh, we've merged uh, TCX uh, and NetKit, so that's basically a more efficient way for uh, containers or Kubernetes pods to do networking uh, with BPF uh, to basically get them into the same performance and latency characteristics as applications in the host. There have been a XTP and AFXTP improvements, for example, things like uh, multi-buffer support or utilizing underlying hardware. Uh, to uh, to gather hints and pull them into BPF programs so they can do things more efficiently. Um, IPsec, so there's uh, there have been uh, KFUNCs to better integrate with IPsec and to, and to make it um, more scalable. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, then support for crypto KFUNCs uh, have been added uh, for the networking side in particular. Then on the tracing area, so we have uh, multi U probe BPF links for attaching uh, multiple U probes and USDT probes efficiently. Uh, that work has landed. Uh, BPFK probes, uh, multi link and session mode. So that's quite useful for things like BPF trace, where you attach uh, programs on entry and exit, and you can then decide whether uh, you want to execute the one on exit and share cookies with that and, and so on. Um, F-probe support for ARM64 uh, has landed, which is also unblocking uh, multi-K-probe support, and it also made uh, BPF tracing programs, such as for F-entry, F-exit, and so on, work on ARM64. And there's uh, currently ongoing work to improve U-probes, to make them faster, more efficient. Um, yeah, on the security side of things, uh, I, I think there are like two, two noteworthy uh, additions. Uh, so basically, new KFUNCs for retrieving uh, extended attributes and also for uh, retrieving FS Rarity Digest so that they basically help uh, BPF LSM programs to make this available there. And something that is ongoing and in its final stage is to basically make the LSM hooks more efficient um, through static calls for speeding them up. So yeah, that's the short summary. And that's all for the intro. So I wish you a productive week and uh, have some good sessions. Thank you. Thank you.